welcome to Coaching Conversations with me, Steve Crabb and Marie Taylor. Hello everyone. The topic of conversation today is what to do when a client asks for something specific and you get a sense as a coach that it's not really the best thing for them. So it's the distinction between what they need and what they want. Okay, Marie, so the question really is, you have a client yeah. who knows what they want, and as a coach, you get a sense that what they want isn't really going to be the best thing to serve them. Mm. Let's, let's talk about that. What's your okay. on that? Um, I think it happens at both the individual level and the organisational level. So it might be easy for me to talk about an organisational example because there are different facets, but mm -hmm. let's, let's think about that. So I think... Um, very often, whether it's an individual or an organisation, people are trying to solve a problem, a perceived problem, a something needs resolving, either because um, somebody needs to de deliver an outcome, the organisation needs to deliver an outcome, someone needs to improve performance, or there's a, there's a something underlying the request. And if we just take what the client gives us in terms of, you know, this is what we want, um, it's almost like you, it's a transactional piece of contracting. Do you see? It's almost like, I want this, can you give it to, give it to me? Yes, I can. So we're almost going back into, um, a bit like we said in the, one of the first videos, you know, we're going back into transactional selling and mm. contracting. Mm. Whereas actually, it's worthy of exploration. You know, it's worth a conversation to look at, okay, let's understand what you say you want and why you want it. Because sometimes in having that conversation, there's an even better solution or mm. an even better way of looking at how they're perceiving the problem. Yeah. Mm. Um, so an example of that would be um, a piece of work that I did once with a, a financial service organisation. I used to do a lot of work with this organisation around career coaching, um, their individual people, but also I did some programmes for them around career coaching in the organisation. And their director of HR asked me if I would help them to develop a coaching programme. And the coaching programme was to train 10 coaches across their UK operation um, to work with 100 of their high potential managers. So the idea was we need these 10 coaches to be trained up as coaches. And we have these, uh, because they're going to work with these 100 managers who we want to support as high potentials during a two year programme. On the face of it, it sounds, yeah, okay, job so, done. Sounds really simple. Yeah, simple. Yeah, someone's simple. worked it out. But, yeah, great. Yeah. So all I need to do is turn up and deliver. Um, and I would never do that, of course. So my uh, conversation with her was around, so what are you actually trying to do? You know, what are you trying to achieve here? And it was about, you know, helping these 100 managers become more efficient, effective, manage their careers more impactfully, um, and become impactful managers. And I said, okay, that's great. So tell me about the 10 coaches, 10 potential people you want me to train as coaches. And she said, well, they're great. You know, they're all HR people. We're looking to expand their portfolio. We want to train them up so that they can do this job internally. They'll eventually become internal coaches. Um, we see a large part of their work being with these 100 managers. Okay, so said, tell me about the profile of your 100 managers. Well, on average, about eight, nine years service. Um, you know, company people, we want to retain them. They're people who we promoted quite a little bit in you know, the last three years. And we want to keep them engaged, but also make sure they stay with us for another 10. Okay. Average age, kind of 35, 40. Right, great. So tell me about your 10 people that you'd like me to train as coaches. Well, they're fabulous, they're enthusiastic, you know, they're young, vibrant, blah, blah, great. What kind of average age? 25, 30, great. How much experience in the business? Oh, on average, three or four years. Right, okay. Um, so let me just sit you for a minute and do exactly how I did it. Let me just sit you face, in for a minute <clears throat> in the position of one of these high potential managers. And I'm a high potential manager, you're a high potential manager. And we're having a conversation and thinking about, you know, do I want to take part in this coaching or not? What's going to draw me towards the coaching? Well, as a high potential manager, I want to learn from other people who've been high potential managers I want a sense of being supported in the organisation to get that 
And I also want a sense of being having an individualised thing for me, you know, something that's about me and yeah. for me. Question is, am I going to go towards a HR person who's been with the organisation three or four years, just trained as a coach, or in training, which they would be, as a coach, and who, you know, with the best will in the world, and I say this as somebody who worked in HR for a long time, is from HR. Am I going to go towards that? And she said, yes, but you see, I've got two objectives to fulfil, Marie. I've got to manage these high potential group, and I've got to do something to develop my people because they, they really want coach training. And I simply said, they're two different issues. They're two different issues. And you might tick the box of getting these two tasks done and off you, you know, done, objective, done, objective, done. But will they fulfil what the organisation's really trying to do here? And really all I did was work with her to help her to say, mm. you're not going to get the a happy outcome, potentially. You could potentially create a bigger problem. Um, and you could also find that you've trained these people, that's great, you can tick that box. You can say you've got those coaches for this group of managers, under managers, but actually will they feel that that's a solution for them? Anyway, upshot was that we ended up helping them to put a mentoring programme in place, an internal mentoring scheme in place, yeah, yeah. where they were the high potentials were learning from more experienced people who were trained to be mentors. They still trained their 10 um, HR people to do coaching, yeah, but at yeah. a different level couple of in things the organisation. popped up in my mind as you've been talking about that. One is you've got clarity mm -hmm. around <clears throat> what will make the difference for the client. So you've not just gone in there and accepted the brief that's been no. given. No. You've been willing to ask the questions and been willing to actually, I guess, even demonstrate coaching mm. by that inquiry. Yes. So they see the value of having you in as a coach. Yeah. So I think there's quite a few other topics around that subject we can mm. explore later. Mm. So, Absolutely. Um, yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah, some great yeah. insights. So if you've got any other questions around <coughs> this particular subject, you can always email us. The email addresses will come along at the end of this recording, or you can contact us on the LinkedIn page, Business Coaching and Mentoring. And you can join us for the next topic of conversation. We're gonna talk about how to prepare for a coaching and mentoring session. So until then, keep coaching. Bye-bye.